everybody welcome back this video is going to teach you to view data in pythons intelligently so we'll start by importing pandas as pd and we'll import numpy as np and then i'm just going to copy and paste what i have over here this is the data frame i'm using uh, i called it my data equals pd.dataframe data. Uh, we're going to have a matrix of random uh, floats from 0 to 1 um, of the size 10 down and 4 across. And I named the colors, the first four colors of the rainbow. So let's read it in my data. And that's what it looks like. So generally, this is like a very small data frame. We're going to have much, much, much larger data frames. So if you just want to get a feel for what your data frame looks like, you could do your data frame name dot head, and then just open and close parentheses. And this is by default going to give you the first five rows of your data frame. But I can also change this number if I just want the first two, or maybe I want the first seven. I could change the number in here. Um, so it is somewhat flexible. I just want to make sure you can like kind of get a grip on your data in pandas because this is something that I had a hard time when I was first uh, learning to use pandas. Um, note that this isn't actually going to change your data frame to looking like this. Um, if I wanted to use this data frame alone, I would have to set it equal to some new variable. Um, so I could say uh, new df equals this. And then if I type in new df, I'm actually getting just the first seven rows of my original data frame. But we're not going to The other one that I wanted to show you was my data or data frame, whatever your data frame's name is, dot tail. And this is going to show you the back end of your data frame. Same thing goes for the default argument. You can change it to one row to show. Um, it's going to go from the bottom up, or I could show the first 10, which would be the next part that I wanted to show you was data frame dot values. This is a useful one in case if you're used to working with uh, NumPy arrays. Um, my data dot values. And this is just going to make your entire data frame into a big array. So within this one big array representing your data frame uh, is a number of small or a number of smaller arrays. Um, so I could do type, like we were talking about in the last video, it's useful to use the type function just in case if you aren't sure what something is. Type of my data dot values. And here you can also reference um, individual arrays within your original array by doing this with the bracket notation, typing one. So this is giving me the second entry in my uh, big array. Oh, let me just print that out again just so you can sort of see what I'm doing with this. Um, so this is gonna be giving me my second array within my array, um, the second entry. It's indexed as one because Python does zero indexing, remember? Um, and I could keep calling even deeper into this array. And now I'm just getting the second entry within the second entry. Um, so this is just giving me a float. So good to know in case if you're trying to uh, use a for loop to get through your data frame or something like that. Um, the next one that I wanted to talk about was columns. My data dot columns. And this is going to give me each of the columns in my data frame. And I can uh, use these, they're indexed similarly. Um, I call them one by one or loop through them, um, and it'll just give me the column name. Pretty simple. Let me do index because it makes sense to do index after columns. So my data dot index. And this is going to give me the index of my data frame. So that's these numbers along here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And those are also zero indexed. Um, and if I do my data dot index of one, I'm going to get one. This is pulling out the one indexed entry from here. Uh, so pretty simple, pretty straight. Uh, my data dot describe. This is the next function. 
It's good for getting summary statistics on each of the columns in your data frame. Um, now there's a couple things to this function, a couple of options. So automatically it counts the number of entries within this column on the data frame. So we had 10 entries up here. So it counts 10, it gives you it as a float for some reason, I don't know why. Um, it gives you the mean, so it gives you mean, average, same thing um, for all of the entries in that column. Then it gives you the um, minimum 0.16268668. So that's the smallest one that it found within this column. And sure enough, there it is. Um, it's going to give us the 20. This entry was greater than 25% of the entries within the data set. Um, 50th percentile, same thing as median. 75th percentile, uh, it's going to give you the entry that's greater than 75% of them in the data set. And your max, so this is going to be the one that's greater than 100%. So pretty basic summary statistics that we're getting here. Um, I can also change the percentiles because the percentiles are defaulted to 25%, 50%, 50 and 75%. I could change them to percentiles equals um, let's say 0.3, uh, 0.6, and 0.9. And it's going to give, give me the 30th, per, oh, it still gives me the 50th percentile because it gives me the median, useful to know. Um, 30th percentile, 60th percentile, and 90th percentile. So pretty similar, um, useful to know if you want to get something if you want to transpose your data frame, you can use your data frame name dot capital T. And all that this is doing is it's flipping the rows and columns um, along like this kind of imaginary axis right here, um, or along the diagonal here. Um, and your column names become your row indices, and your row indices become your column names. So I could do my data dot t dot columns, and it's going to give me. You can also sort on an index. Um, so right now it doesn't really look like it's doing anything because it's sorting down zero, one, two, three, four, five. Six. It was already sorted, um, but we can also do um, axis equals one, ascending equals false. And all that this is doing is it's rearranging. Let me show you the original data frame too. My data. So this one goes red, orange, yellow, green. And this one goes yellow, red, orange, green. So this one is uh, alphabetizing them in a descending way from uh, Z to A along columns. And axis right here is just saying, I want to sort along columns. So if I do zero, then it's going to do it along the zero axis. The zero axis is the indices, and the one axis is the columns. A little hard to understand for the first time because usually in math you do x and y, you do x horizontally and y vertically, but in pandas, axis zero is along this y-axis. It, it seems like a y-axis, but just think indices before columns. That will help you uh, later on. Um, and we could change this to ascending equals true, and we would get back our... That's it for sort index. And the last one that we can use, maybe more useful for stock data or for whatever you're going to be pulling from, um, is my data dot sort values. Um, you could do by equals whatever column name you're going to want to sort over. Um, so I'm going to sort over, let's say, yellow. And ascending equals. Okay. And now it's reordered all the indices. Um, so you, it does keep those along with whatever row was here. Um, and notice, too, that every row has moved as a whole. So the now the first row along here. Um, 
but it's sorting on the yellow column uh, in a descending way. We said ascending equals false. If we say ascending equals true, then we'll get from low to high on the yellow column. We can also change to other column names. We could say green or any of the other columns. Um, notice too that I can't do by equals something like one, like you can't use the index of the column. So it gets a little tricky. Um, and you will start to get things like this, like key error. When I first started using pandas, this confused the heck out of me. Um, but just read through the errors. Um, I know it's confusing. You don't, even if you don't understand all of this in the error message, it's it's okay at first. As long as you look at this error type, that will often be the most helpful part of the error message. And you can see exactly what's going wrong with your code. Um, because it is a lot of different referencing uh, that can be very confusing for a beginner. Um, so with that, we'll just make everything perfect. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, like, subscribe, leave me some feedback um, as I'm really enjoying doing these. Um, and I, I'm hoping people are learning from them. All right, see you in the